2024 Mazda 2 Hybrid vs. 2024 Toyota Yaris Cross SHEV are a subcompact car comparison. The 2024 Mazda 2 Hybrid and the 2024 Toyota Yaris Cross SHEV are interesting options for a subcompact car, but they cater to slightly different needs. Here's a breakdown to help you choose. Size and functionality. Mazda 2 Hybrid, classic subcompact hatchback. Lower ride height. Less cargo space. Ideal for city driving in tight spaces. Toyota Yaris Cross SHEV, subcompact crossover SUV. Higher ride height. More cargo space. Offers a bit more off-road capability. Performance. Mazda 2 Hybrid, more engaging to drive, known for sharp handling, fun for enthusiasts. Slightly less powerful engine. Toyota Yaris Cross SHEV, comfortable ride, focuses on fuel efficiency. Offers all-wheel drive option for some trims. Other considerations. Fuel economy, both are hybrids, but the Yaris Cross might have a slight edge due to its size and weight. Price, the Mazda 2 Hybrid might be a bit cheaper. Technology and features, both will have modern features, but Toyota might offer a slight edge in standard features. In short, choose Mazda 2 Hybrid 4, fun driving experience, lower price, maneuverability in tight spaces. Choose Toyota Yaris Cross SHEV 4, more cargo space, higher ride height, all-wheel drive option, if needed, potentially better fuel economy. Additional tips. Check official manufacturer websites for the latest specs and features. Look for reviews that compare driving experiences of both cars. Test drive both vehicles to see which one feels better for you. By considering these factors and doing your research, you can make an informed decision on which car best suits your needs. Thanks to its superb efficiency and comfortable ride, the Mazda 2 Hybrid is fine small car. The thing is though, we think the Toyota Yaris makes even more sense, and if you aren't fixed on a hybrid the much cheaper Renault Clio is a better buy. Go for entry-level centerline trim to keep the price respectable. This led to the Daihatsu new global architecture, which now serves everything from K cars to MPVs. And this latest DNGA car, the Yaris Cross, may just be their best yet. Even better, it fuses the low cost platform with Toyota's iconic hybrid Synergy Drive, resulting in the brand's cheapest and possibly most economical hybrid ever. Performance and drive. What it's like to drive and how quiet it is. Regardless of which trim you go for, the Mazda 2 Hybrid comes with a three-cylinder petrol engine that's helped out by an electric motor. In total, it pumps out 114 brake horsepower, and while that doesn't look that impressive on paper, in practice performance is perfectly adequate. You see, the hybrid system provides instant power from the electric motor when you put your foot down, eliminating the delay you can get from a conventional petrol car when setting off from a standstill. Indeed, it's quite impressive how quickly it jumps off the line, matching the entry-level Toyota Yaris's 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint time of 9.7 seconds. In short, it won't leave you wanting when you need a sudden burst of pace. Like the Yaris, the two hybrids power is fed to the front wheels through a CVT automatic gearbox which, while responsive at pretty much any speed, causes the revs to soar and stay high until you ease off the accelerator pedal. That can generate a fair amount of noise when you're climbing a steep hill or accelerating up to motorway speeds. Happily, the hybrid system means that in other situations you don't have to constantly floor the accelerator pedal to make good progress. In fact, if you're very gentle with the accelerator in town, you can run on electricity alone for short periods, keeping the noise down and boosting efficiency. The two hybrid charges its battery when the engine is running and through regenerative braking. The Cross is powered by a 90 horsepower 1.5 liter Atkinson cycle gasoline engine mated to a 79 horsepower hybrid assist motor. Combined output peaks at 110 horsepower as they reach their respective peaks at different road speeds. The planetary drive transmission, not a real CVT, despite the eCVT name, relies on the electric motor to get going until the Cross is moving fast enough for the gasoline engine to take over. The lack of slipping clutches or drive belts, or of complex gear sets with fragile synchros, makes this setup much more durable than other automatic transmissions.
In terms of performance, the Yaris Cross does 0 to 100 km per hour in a tested 10.5 seconds, decently quick, and a big jump over the 11.3 seconds of the gasoline variant. Power delivery is also much smoother, especially in Stopango traffic, where the gasoline CVT can get a bit grouchy. You get the same power slash econ drive button, and yes, you can activate both modes at once, giving you the lower AC use of econ mode with the sharper throttle responsive power. Sources suggest the Yaris Cross's hybrid battery is just 0.76 kWh, about half the capacity of the one on the Corolla. The engine churns away rather noisily while charging in traffic, and all urban economy hovers between 8 to 12 km per liter of gasoline. Interior The interior layout, fit and finish. If you've been inside the latest Toyota Yaris you'll have some serious deja vu. The only difference in the Mazda 2 Hybrid is the badge on the steering wheel. That's not such a bad thing though. For starters, it means the 2 Hybrid has proper physical controls on its dashboard, including switches and dials for the air conditioning system. This is preferable to the layout in, say, the VW Polo, which requires you to faff around with touch-sensitive buttons or delve into the touchscreen to make simple changes. The Yaris Inside, however, the DNGA design language is pretty strong. There are bits and pieces similar to the Velas and Rayis, but the slashing lines and chunky shapes are covered in much nicer materials. A leatherette strip with a blue fabric insert bisects the dash to hide how tall it is. A big 10.1-inch screen and a conspicuously tall instrument binnacle also help hide the high scuttle. That instrument cluster features a small screen and a segmented LED speedometer that are easy to see from any seating position. Ergonomics are good, with a power driver's seat and a tilt and telescoping steering wheel, though forward visibility is somewhat affected by that tall dash. You get good knee room and headroom in all positions, but the odd wing on the center console eats into the front passenger footwell. A big, creaky piece of plastic that doesn't serve any useful function. The narrow console features a wireless phone pad tucked up in front of the shifter, hard to access with the stick in park, and a tiny center box that's too small to lay a phone flat in. Even if you have an older phone. Other than the deep cup holders, with flimsy flip-up shelves for smaller drinks, there's not much storage space here. Speaking of touchscreens, most versions of the two hybrid come with a 9 inches touchscreen infotainment system, while the top spec Homura Plus increases the size of the screen to 10.5 inches. Regardless of which trim you go for, you get a DAB radio, Bluetooth, and wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring, good news because only the top trim level comes with built-in satin heavy. With both screen sizes, you get a high-resolution display that's easy to read and reacts fairly quickly to your prods. The smaller screen even gets a couple of physical shortcut buttons up the side, making it easier to hop between functions on the move. Thanks to the two hybrid slender front and rear window pillars, you get a good view out in all directions, so it's easy to place the car where you want it on the road. For extra help when parking, all trims come with a rear view camera, while going for exclusive line or higher also gets you front and rear parking sensors. Yaris. Moving back, you find a comfortable rear bench. At least for two. Rear AC vents poke into the knee space of anyone sitting in the center. But at least the center armrest is nice and big. The trunk is surprisingly deep with the floor in the lower position, though not quite as long as in some competitors. There are small plastic bins at the side, though on the hybrid, one is replaced by a barnacle housing electrical equipment. That said, the automatic tailgate and retractable tonneau cover make this the most convenient cargo bay in the class. We managed to stuff a surprising amount of cargo in there on one of our port runs, 